Iran vows to avenge deadly Syria strike blamed on Israel. <laughs> now the bootneck famously doesn't really take a position on the Israel versus Palestine conflict because he's been a lifelong chippy atheist slash agnostic chap and therefore finds it quite peculiar that two tribes are willing to butcher each other basically because they disagree about what may or may not be an entirely fictional entity uh, so I've always found it quite fascinating and I do not care however I do find it funny that it says um, blamed on Israel <laughs> like who else in the region is capable of dropping precision laser guided bombs on embassies <laughs> and would actually want to do such a thing in the current climate. Yeah, there's probably a few countries around there who could manage it, but it's not going to have been the Egyptians, is it? Iran has vowed to respond to what it said was an Israeli airstrike on Monday that destroyed an Iranian consulate building in Syria's capital, Damascus. Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei said Israel would regret this crime while President Ibrahim Raisi suggested that it would not go unanswered. Yeah, if you want people to think you're reasonable, um, Supreme Leader, <laughs> it's, it's a good title that. At least our Supreme Leaders call themselves things that sound more reasonable. You know, they are Supreme Leaders and they care about the law about as much as the Grand Ayatollah cares about pulled pork sandwiches but um, at least they have the good graces to pretend to care about democracy. Anyway, seeing as it's the gift that keeps on giving, the Israel-Palestine problem, and we haven't talked about it for a while, I thought I'd cover it now. The good news is Al Jazeera has, has noticed the bootneck's reasonable, impartial, centrist take on the conflict, and as such, they're going to interview me in the studio. They said they're sending a company car around for me. What's that? I've just heard it pull up outside. Uh, what's the matter? Every self-respecting media company ferries their employees around in the um, <coughs> Adolf, Colonel Gaddafi, Bin Laden uh, shuttle bus. Uh, it's normal, standard operating procedure, isn't it? Okay, so here's the story. Let's have a quick read. And as usual, I'll give you my totally serious and entirely reasonable thoughts on the matter. Uh, Iranian State TV reported that seven Revolutionary Guards, including two generals and six Syrians, were killed. You do have to hand it to the 4B2s. They don't piss about to the two generals. If that was the Royal Air Force, we'd have got two janitors. <laughs> you know it's true. And if Biden ordered it, they'd drop a £2,000 bomb on two bouncy castles, wipe out about 40 kids at the birthday party, and then the mainstream media would just cease to talk about the issue. You know, they'd go with more important things, like Donald Trump's hair, Donald Trump's shoes, Donald Trump having two scoops of ice cream when everybody else gets one. Yes, that was a real story. Pay attention. The Israeli military said it didn't comment on foreign media reports. Yeah, well, they're not going to have it. They're not going to go, it was us, you wankers. Have it. An unnamed senior Israeli government official told Reuters news agency that those killed had been behind many attacks on Israeli and American assets and had plans for additional attacks. They also insisted the embassy was not a target. <laughs> Listen, I, I, it's totally reasonable that you were attacking the people inside the embassy, but by definition, if that's where they are when you choose to drop a large amount of ordnance on their heads, the, the embassy was kind of the target of the attack, wasn't it? It's like me shooting you in the head and going, I wasn't aiming for the eyeball. <laughs> Look, it's the intent that really counts. The New York Times also cited four Israeli officials as confirming that Israel had carried out the strike, but denying the building had diplomatic status. Diplomatic immunity. That only works if you're a South African. So, un un unlucky lads. Israel has acknowledged carrying out hundreds of strikes in recent years on targets in Syria that it says are linked to Iran and allied armed groups. The strikes have reportedly been stepped up since the start of the war in Gaza in October last year in response to the cross-border attacks. This is all boring, isn't it? This is all boring. We know all this stuff. All right, let's just stop there, shall we? I'll give you the keynotes version. This is as basic as it gets, but it's factually accurate, and it's probably going to help those of you that get a bit confused with all of the endless back and forth on Israel-Palestine. Here it is in a nutshell. All of the countries around Israel are regulars at Alan's legendary snack bar. And no matter what they want to tell you, they do hate 
the 4B2s. It's just the way that it is. This is why they hardly protested about the million Uyghurs that got locked in concentration camps by the Chinese and harvested for organs. You didn't see them crying about that every weekend in London, did you? But the second the attacks are carried out by the 4B2s, all of a sudden there's a riot every weekend in Tower Hamlets, right? It's laughable. Now, I don't have a dog on this hunt. I think they obviously have their own machinations at heart. It's the way of the world. Every country should run this way. This is what I've always said about the evils of globalization. Angela Merkel should have been worrying about Germany. Macron should have been worrying about France. The Israelis are perfectly entitled to worry about Israel. And the Egyptians are entitled to worry about Egypt. But it's only in the last 20 years that all of the leaders of the Western world started questioning every single policy decision and going, yes, but will this be bad for Iran? You're not voted to look after Iran. Doing that is like the CEO of Burger King worrying that his new product will outsell something KFC sells. That's not how sensible people run the world. Can you imagine? It's like Ben and Jerry's going, listen, Jerry, we can't release the new flavor of ice cream. Why not, Ben? Well, because it's going to sell really well. Isn't that the point? No, because if it sells too well, it might harm Hagen dazs And we couldn't have that, could we? You're right, throw it in the sea. When is that going to happen? The leaders of the Western world are full-blown traitors at this point. Well, Ange when Angela Merkel signed up to let in 4 million fighting age men that couldn't be vetted, she was thinking of doing a solid for people who she has absolutely no allegiance to at all. It's mental. It's like you scooping the turkey twizzlers out of your own kid's mouth, crossing the street and then giving them to a random orphan. You don't have responsibility for perfect strangers. You have responsibility for people that you've got something to do with. And when we elected you to look after us and our interests and our children and our immediate family members, we didn't say, yeah, yeah, but make sure you couch everything you do with is it good for kids in Somalia? What's it got to do with me? I don't want to sound like an insensitive prick, but I'm not interested. It's human nature to worry about you and your own. Case closed. Went on a bit of a rant there, didn't I? <laughs> what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Israel versus Palestine, the gift that keeps on giving. The short version is this. Almost every country that is predominantly inhabited by the followers of one of the desert gods absolutely despise the followers of the other desert gods. Everybody who's got a hole in their ass or a room temperature IQ knows it to be true. And all the people that run the world want to talk about, want to make it sound far more complicated than it actually is. They will never stop fighting. They aren't interested in a peace process as long as they believe they can possibly win through strength of arms. So what we've got to do is let it play out, let them mallet each other again and see which side gets sick enough to come to the table. Because as long as they believe they can actually get something out of it, both sides will keep fighting. That's how it works. So there's no sense crying about it. There's no sense going to a protest. There's no sense going, wow, 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 we demand a ceasefire. Both sides will not agree to a ceasefire until they've softened each other up a little bit. That's the way it works. That's the way it's always worked. You don't have to go all the way back to Thermopylae to figure this one out. So stop worrying about it. Have a cup of tea. Watch the fireworks and pray that we don't all end up in nuclear Armageddon. And if we do, we can at least be safe in the knowledge that I won't have to read the BBC ever again because it will have been mercifully reduced to rubble. And I think with that being the case, I'll probably have a big smile on my face and a massive erection in my pants, even if the worst happens. Get in. Happy days. Anyway, <laughs> let me know what you think about the current conflict in the Middle East. Let me know if you give a monkey's fart, because I know that I don't, and I will see you all very soon. Toodle pip. Cheers. Mm.